What's up everyone, Ray Del Vecchio here. In the last 10 years, I've built almost 70 websites and haven't gone through the analytics. They've been seen by close to 1 million people, which is pretty mind blowing. All of those website projects were unique. However, the core elements of how to set up a website remain the same every single time. This video is for the beginners out there that want to build their first website and are confused by all the tech jargon that goes along with that process. If that sounds like you, stick around because we're going to go through the basics of how domain registration and website hosting work, and then we'll discuss what the various web hosting package types mean and the pros and cons of each. And hopefully by the end, you'll have a better understanding of how to choose the right one for your situation. So let's start with how websites work. And I created a, a real simple graphic here to go over the process of domain registration and website hosting. For this example, I picked two of the big companies out there, GoDaddy.com and HostGator.com. I use both of them personally. And GoDaddy is most popular for domains, but all of these companies generally offer all services. So GoDaddy has hosting, domains, website builders, and HostGator does the same exact thing. I haven't had a good experience with GoDaddy hosting, which is why I've stayed away from them from a hosting perspective, but I've had no problems with them just for domain registration. So when you register your domain with GoDaddy, you're going to get access to these DNS settings for each domain that you register. And then when you sign up with a hosting company like HostGator, they're going to send you their DNS servers. So you sign up with your HostGator account and they're going to send you likely two DNS servers. All you have to do is go into your GoDaddy settings and plug in your HostGator DNS servers. That's literally all you need to get set up with your website. And the DNS server, its function is to translate your domain into an IP address. So all it does is when you as the visitor go to a website, you know, you open up your browser and type in a domain name, it's going to send that domain name to a DNS server where it maps it to the IP address of your web host. And that's where it gets all the files from. So that's how the website is downloaded. So hopefully that wasn't too confusing for you. And I hope that this graphic is simple enough to understand but really all you need to remember is that when you register your domain wherever you register the domain you should have access to DNS settings and whatever you put within those DNS settings that's going to define where your website is hosted now before we go into the hosting packages we have to figure out what your goal is you might be wanting to do one of many things so the first questions that you're going to want to ask yourself are do you want to create one website only? Or if we project into the future, are you planning to build multiple websites? And does multiple websites mean two or three? Or does it mean maybe 10 or 20? And then you have to think about the software that you're going to use to build the website. Are you building from scratch with HTML? Do you want to use a content management system like WordPress? Are you just going to use templates or, or a builder offered by the web hosting company like HostGator or GoDaddy? Or are you planning on doing custom development and maybe even code with a higher level language like PHP or JavaScript. And last but not least, consider the traffic of the website. So if you're just starting out a website, it's not gonna have high traffic. It's gonna take a while to build up the traffic. And then even for established websites, they might be low traffic if they're local. And then on the other end of the spectrum, you might have a global oriented website based around a hobby or a general interest that applies to people worldwide. And in those cases, once you get to a point of high traffic, your web hosting options are going to change. And I have to point this out. You'll see a lot of people that leave bad reviews for cheaper web hosting companies. They're people that don't consider the beginner's experience. You know, you can always upgrade. There's nothing wrong with starting with a cheaper package and upgrading down the road when you start getting more traffic. So let's look at the options that are going to be available to you on the majority of web hosting companies across the internet. More than likely, you're going to be choosing from one of these types of packages. Shared hosting, reseller hosting, a virtual private server, dedicated hosting, cloud hosting, and managed WordPress hosting. The first one is shared hosting and this is the cheapest, the quickest, and the easiest to get started. You're going to see really great deals for shared hosting packages. And this is really dominated by the big companies. I mean, that's really how all markets are. Anything cheap is going to be dominated by big companies. 
and anything that's really expensive is by small companies that offer a high-end customer service experience. With that said, the main con to shared hosting is that, as the name suggests, you're going to be sharing your hosting package with a lot of other websites. Depending on you know who your neighbors are, that might mean that your website is going to load slower. Now, with that said, I think it's the option that you should start with if you're a beginner for the reason of it being cheap and that you can always upgrade. The next one is reseller hosting. And this is what I started with many years ago. I had the vision that I wanted to create websites for small businesses and local businesses. So from the get-go, I knew that I wanted a plan where I can create multiple hosting accounts. And that's really what reseller hosting is. It's pretty much shared hosting, but where you can create unlimited websites. And as, the, as this name suggests, you can actually sell hosting plans. You don't need to create websites specifically. You could literally just create hosting accounts and let the people figure it out themselves. A step above that is VPS hosting and this is virtual private server and with this you're getting resources that act like your own so so it acts as though it's not being shared with other websites even though from a physical perspective it might literally be on the same server but there's software over top of it that give you dedicated resources to run your website so you don't have to worry about other websites interfering with your performance. They also give you root access, so if you need to do any technical stuff or IT level stuff, you're going to have more options with a VPS server versus a shared hosting server. And the main downside is that this is going to cost more than shared hosting, and it's also not as scalable as some of the other options if you do start to get more traffic. One step above VPS is dedicated hosting. So this is where you actually get physical resources. You know, you get a physical web server that is all yours and that's where your website runs. So this is generally expensive. I think I, I've never looked into this for myself, but just having browsed around, I've seen prices anywhere from like $75 to $200 per month for dedicated hosting plans. So this is something that you're really only going to need if you have a high traffic website and you're a technical kind of person. Nowadays, a popular option is cloud hosting. So instead of your host being on a physical computer, you know, sitting somewhere maybe in the United States or internationally, your website hosting is on the cloud. And the big advantage to this is that you have redundancy. So it's usually faster. It's more scalable, especially if the traffic surges start to happen. You know, your site's not going to crash as easily as it would if you were on a shared server that only had a specific amount of, you know, RAM or memory. So this is going to cost you a little bit more. And the other downside is that you might not get the same access that you would if you had a dedicated server. And a similar version of cloud hosting is managed WordPress hosting. So this is specifically optimized for the WordPress content management software and database oriented websites. They also do a lot of updates for you, so it's going to be more secure. You don't have to worry about doing that manually. And similar to cloud hosting, the downsides to this are price and control. So I had to do this for one of my websites. It started to get a lot of traffic and the performance of all the websites that were on that shared server, and that included both personal and client websites, the load speed of all of them started to decline. So I knew I had to get my high traffic websites off of that shared server and just keep the low traffic websites on there. And when I switched over to managed WordPress hosting and the company I chose was Kinsta.com, the performance of the website just went through the roof. The page load time before was something between a second to two seconds. When I transferred over to Kinsta, it's now down to like 0.2 seconds. So it improved way more than what I could have done by tweaking all the settings within WordPress or anything like that. If you're a beginner though, don't worry about any of that stuff. Start with the most basic shared hosting package and get your website up and running. If you're ready to do that right now, I highly recommend HostGator. I've used them for almost a decade now, so they've been around a long time. They're very reliable, and I think they've been one of the easiest to use. Go to HostGator.com slash WPC2. I'm partnering with them to give you the best offer for a one-year term. You'll get 45% off. And if you get to the checkout page in another way, you can apply this discount using the coupon code WPC2. And if you don't have the time right now to set up your website, or maybe you just want a little bit more guidance, 
go to websiteprofitcourse.com slash beginner. I'm going to put together an email series where you'll get this video along with WordPress 101 tutorials so you can get accustomed to how to edit and create a website with WordPress. And on top of that, you'll get a full length tutorial step by step on how to create a business website from scratch. That should be more than enough to give you the confidence to create your own website this year. Go ahead and check out that beginner series. And if you found this video helpful, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you're interested at all in building websites, you'll definitely want to subscribe to my channel because I'm going to be coming out with a lot of videos, a lot of short tutorials along with other teaching videos like this. My goal this year is really to help as many people create their website. I've learned so much through all of my websites, personal websites, client websites. I, I like to say that websites are the best vehicle to learn about business because you could touch every aspect of business with a website. So they're the, they're the perfect launching pad that doesn't take a massive investment. You know, it doesn't cost that much. You can get started for under $100 in almost every case. And if you have a little bit more to work with, then that's where you want to invest more in the strategy side of things. I don't think you want to invest right away in the best technology when you have, don't have web design and you don't have any traffic. All the links that I mentioned here will be in the description below. That's all that I got for you today. I want to really thank you for taking the time to watch this, and I hope to see you on the next video. Have a great one, everyone.